yes good morning students yes good morning students good morning sir okay so voice is audible ma yes sir audible okay one minute i will share i will share my screen no ppt is also visible yes sir visible sir okay thank you ma okay last class is this yeah last class what we discussed we discussed on uh, we solved a problem on balancing of rotating masses is there any doubt regarding that yes no doubt no sir yeah now before going to i move on to the model 3 so first just i'll go for i will take two or three minutes to revise our previous module yeah in module 1 it states that module 1 is is a static and dynamic balancing balancing right sorry static and dynamic force analysis sorry yeah in module 1 the static and dynamic force analysis then how do you make a static and dynamic force analysis by taking a equilibrium equation first static force equilibrium equation is nothing but vector sum of all the force equal to zero another one is static moment equilibrium vector sum of all the moment about an arbitrary point equal to zero second one if you go for dynamic force analysis again we use a dynamic uh, force analysis equation. one is dynamic force equilibrium equation is yes moment audible yes sir audible sir yeah, okay in dynamic force equilibrium whatever the first one, uh, force dynamic equilibrium vector sum of all the force acting on a body is equal to mass into linear acceleration if you go for uh, second one uh, what is of moment or torque dynamic equilibrium equation vector sum of all the torque or moment is equal to mass moment of inertia into angular acceleration right and then in the module one again we discussed static we studied only a static force analysis of four bar mechanism slider crank mechanism and quick return motion <coughs> mechanism right and you all almost know remember those three equilibrium equation static force equilibrium equation one is remember subject to only two force member then if you want to make it equilibrium those two force magnitude should be a same act in opposite direction same line of action second one a member is subject to three force member three force acting on a member means if i want to make it a member is under equilibrium condition all the three forces acting the line of action for all the three forces should be meet at a point that point is called as point of concurrency and if you try a force polygon for all the three forces there is no resultant force exist then third case if member is subjected to two force and a torque whatever the two, uh, two forces are acting here they are parallel to each other acting in opposite direction the magnitude is same but act in opposite direction or parallel to each other that produces a couple then in order to make it balance that we need one more a uh, torque or a couple which is acting opposite to the the couple which is formed by the two forces remember those three conditions static equilibrium equation a member is subject to two force a member is subject to three forces and a member is subject to two force and a torque and then you go for analyze it the what is the force convention how do you represent force exerted by member i on j A member one on member two, or link one on link two, we represent as F suffix I J or F suffix one two. And also we analysis force analysis of a uh, slider crank mechanism and four bar mechanism. Means we are going to determine 
the magnitude and direction of forces acting on each part or each link on the mechanism when a mechanism is subjected to an external forces right and also we discussed principle of virtual work etc right that is discussed in module 1 static and dynamic force analysis we study only a static force analysis next in module 2 balancing of rotating and reciprocating masses balancing is nothing but it is a process or technique to eliminate or to correct unwanted inertia forces that are present in rotary masses or rotary machines or reciprocating machines that technique is called as a balancing again if you go for balancing there are two types of balancing one is static balancing another one is dynamic balancing static balancing is nothing but vector sum of all the when the body is under rest or in under uniform rotation vector sum of all the forces acting on your body equal to zero means when several masses are rotating on the shaft the cg of the rotors and see that is coincide with the axis of the shaft then it become a static balance when you go for dynamic balancing vector sum of all the movements or a torque is equal to uh, yeah so in dynamic balancing two again equations one is vector sum of all the force equal to zero second vector sum of all the movement about an arbitrary point equal to zero movement is nothing but force into distance in static balancing only vector sum of all the force equal to zero in dynamic balancing vector sum of all the force equal to zero another one is vector sum of all the movement about an arbitrary point is equal to zero that is a static and dynamic balancing and also we discuss what is the balancing of rotating masses in that we have discussed about four cases first case balancing of single rotating masses by using a single counter mass in the same plane second one balancing of a single rotating masses by locating two different counter masses either that is located in on one plane or one side or in the disturbed mass in between the counter masses third one balancing of several masses rotating in several masses are rotating in the same plane then fourth one balancing of several masses rotating in different plane for from the exam point of view in the model to what we can expect here write a short note on static and dynamic balancing or the problems that related to case number 3 and case number 4 okay yes yes is there any doubt regarding model 1 and model 2 in model 1 we covered only one one topic one question you can attend and model 2 also one question you can attend yes as give me response is there any doubt regarding the model 1 and model 2 No sir. No. no sir. Again, whatever your assignments, assignment you should send to my email ID. Okay. Some of the students are sent to my WhatsApp number. Don't send to my WhatsApp number. Directly you send to my email ID. I think you all know about my email ID. Okay, I will send in my in the. No sir. Yeah. Now today we are going to start one more module, module three. governor sun gyroscope again here also we are trying to cover only one question governor okay yeah what do you mean by governor yeah the next slide is visible is yes, give me response yes. yes sir visible sir okay thank you yeah governor is a device okay it mainly used to maintain the engine speed within the limit or it maintain the constant speed you can say that or we maintain the speed of engine within the limit whenever the load is varies how the load is varies is a governor is a device used to maintain the engine speed within the limit whenever the load varies load varies means if you consider an ic engine internal combustion engine if you take in okay in internal combustion engine it can take again in that it take four stroke or it can take two stroke also here are just better I'll go for take four stroke uh, either maybe petrol engine or diesel engine okay in four stroke what happens the suction compression power and exhaust during four stroke you can see the on the crank shaft how the load varies occurred on the crank shaft during these strokes in suction whatever the torque or load occurred on the crank shaft is less during compression 
more load is occurred because it has to transmit the power from crankshaft to the uh, to the piston to compress the air in power stroke once it is uh, heat is liberated from the chemical energy of the fuel and the air the more power more force is pressure acting on the piston means again on the crankshaft more load is occurred then in exhaust stroke again less load is or less torque is occurred on the crankshaft means in if you consider a one cycle on the crankshaft the torque or load varies then how once it is load varies then i want to maintain the i want to maintain the crankshaft has to rotate a the speed within the limit means to maintain the constant speed how do you maintain the constant speed of the crankshaft in uh, four stroke ic engine you can see the another end of the crankshaft you can see a heavy mass vehicle or oh, sorry a heavy mass wheel is attached that's like made up of cast iron is attached to the one end of the crankshaft that wheel is called as a flywheel what is the importance of flywheel it receives the energy when power stroke is occurred and it liberates the energy there's a mechanical energy kinetic energy when to uh, remaining stroke suction compression exhaust stroke then it liberates at the same time the crankshaft has to rotate at the same speed whenever the load is varies occurred on the crankshaft that device is called as a, that is a variation of load in two ways one is during each revolution or for a cyclic revolution so you can see the variation in the output torque of the engine during cycle then i want to maintain the constant speed of that crankshaft now which do we device you attach here flywheel suppose if number of revolutions are there for the in, then what happen the load here the variation of load upon the engine if number of revolutions are there for example when you go for ride a, a two wheeler a four wheel vehicle or car or buses and trucks now if you go for ride it i want to maintain the constant speed of that vehicle for example 60 kilometers per hour if you want to maintain the constant speed of the vehicle then whenever the load varies here suppose if your the vehicle is moving in hill station in this climbing the hill or if it in down conditions right then what happens the load is varies here then but i want to maintain the constant speed of the engine how do you maintain by using a device the fitted with the the vehicle is fitted with the device the device is called as a governor you can see almost all in our college buses ksrtc buses on um, beside of the driver you can see the in the bannet actually yeah, in bannet uh, be before the bannet you can see in the near bannet and the mirror in between you can see the uh, one small devices that is electronically controlled devices you can see the name on that this bus is fitted with a speed grover governor means the device is attached to that to maintain the engine speed within the limit whenever the load varies that is a, that device is called as a governor okay so why do you want to use this governor you want to maintain the engine speed within the limit you have to produce a constant output okay a constant uh, yeah power you want to generate for example in steam turbine i want to supply the steam okay in the constantly you want to supply the speed uh, the steam or if you take water turbines i want to supply the i want to pro produce a constant power output from the water turbine by supplying uh, the water to the turbine there you can see the governors they are fitted here okay so why that governor is fitted here see that last statement in this slide if the load on the shaft increases once the sh sh load on the shaft increases what happens speed automatically decreases the engine speed decreases once the engine speed decreases how the engine speed decreases due to the less supply of fuel then i want to make it maintain the constant speed then we'll go for what to do we'll go for increase the supply of fuel how do you increase the supply of fuel by opening the throttle valve right again if the load on the shaft is decreases once the load on the shaft decreases what happens speed increases speed of the engine increases again i want to maintain within the limit of this uh, engine speed then i will go for cut off the fuel by closing the throttle valve the, this will occur automatically it will govern it will uh, occur in the uh, if you fitted the device that device is called as a governor
best example you can feel suppose you are riding a bike suppose you are moving in a flat surface okay in the road it is in the flat road it is i want to maintain 60 km per hour if you just what we accelerated here constant suppose hill station comes again i want to maintain same speed what we'll do we'll go for raise the accelerator increase the accelerator means i want to maintain the constant speed of the vehicle a constant speed of the bike suppose you are moving in the hill station right downward again what we'll do we'll not accelerate we'll go for deaccelerate so manually we go for control the supply of the fuel by opening and closing of the throttle valve to maintain the constant speed right same thing if we fitted the device that the governor device to the vehicle the that device will automatically it maintain the opening and closing the throttle valve we control the supply of the fuel yes then best uh, we'll go for next slide how this will happen here here the type of governor is one type of is watt governor as also called as centrifugal governor now on the right side you can see that if a source suppose this governor is fitted to a engine internal combustion engine the source of the source is nothing but fuel if the governor is fitted to a steam turbine then what is the source what is the working fluid here steam suppose if the governor is fitted to water turbine the working fluid or source is water okay now here the source is sent to where suppose if it is a fuel it is then sent to the engine if it is a steam it is sorry it is a steam it is then it is steam turbine or if it is water is a source water is a working fluid then it is a water turbine clear now how do you control the the quantity of the source which moves to the main turbine or engine by by controlling the opening and closing of throttle valve then how do you control this opening and closing of throttle valve that is fitted to a, a governor here what type of governor here watt governor is a scientist name watt okay he invented that device the governor device is called as watt governor now what it consists watt governor is mainly consists of four arms see the arms are nothing but these are the binary links see that arms is called as the upper arms i think it is visible the slide is visible and the cursor which is moving on the slide also visible give me yes sir yes sir yes sir okay yeah one minute yeah now these are the arms how many arms are there this is a one this is a two and this is a three and this is a four total four arms are there the so arms are nothing but links these are binary links means how many the joints here only two joints right that's why it's called as a binary links these are called as this is a link okay this arm one and two this arm one and two are called as upper arms this is three and four are called as lower arms see that on the upper arm one and two is fitted to the shaft this is a governor axis shaft and on another end of this upper arms you can see the a governor ball okay the mass this is a governor ball is fitted here the mass of the governor ball is will represent as m okay on the another side also on the another upper arms also arm number 2 they are also they fitted to the another governor ball okay lower arm see that the lower arm 3 and 4 is fitted to one more device is called as a one more component called as a sleeve it is also it will moves up and down okay the sleeve is a heavy mass uh, uh, component just to place over the governor axis that is called as a sleeve see that on the sleeve uh, the how do you supply the power mechanical power to the governor shaft axis with the help of a, a pulley which is attached here to the governor axis then where is the source for this pull, the uh, yeah where how do you get the power to this pulley that is connected to crank shaft or engine shaft okay yeah now we can see the from the sleeve here the sleeve again here binary links one more here another binary links again this is the one more binary link that is connected to a throttle valve now this is a throttle valve 
the how the throttle valve moves here it, it makes it rotate in clockwise and at, at the same time counter clock opening and closing of the valve this is the introduction about the well, it's the introduction about what watt governor watt governor is a type of governor is a centrifugal type of governor which is used to maintain the engine speed within the a limit by the which method here due to the centrifugal force what is the centrifugal force a force which is acting radially outward now will that is the introduction after that this a, how do you remember the theory part that is very important first always go for introduction okay here i will return here first always go for introduce how the term comes next we'll go for second one is construction construction is nothing but how it is constructed here how what the figure the sketch you should draw now what are the parts and label the parts right upper arms two upper arms two lower arms the governor balls the sleeve the governor shaft axis and the mechanism which is attached in between the the governor and the throttle valve etc now after this now we'll go for explain the third point is working principle how it works okay how it works yeah see that whenever the fuel is supplied here supplied to the engine so for consider is the cover is fitted to internal combustion engine okay the source of the fuel the source is i'll consider the fuel and whatever you consider his engine suppose if you supply fuel to the engine the engine is generate the power okay the crankshaft rotate once the crankshaft rotate that power is transferred to air to the governor shaft once the governor shaft rotates what happens once the governor shaft rotates what happens due to rotation here at angular velocity omega or you can take the speed is n once the governor shaft uh, rotates what happen due to the mass of the ball that also rotate that moves radially outward like this right that moves radially outward once it moves radially outward initially the radius of rotation means the cg of the governor ball and the shaft axis that distance is called as the radius of rotation r right the radius of rotation is increases due to the governor shaft rotates the governor ball moves radially outward at the same time what happens the mass of the governor ball acts the weight of the governor ball is m into g that acts vertically downward due to rotation here a force which acts radially outward what is the force which radi acts radially outward that force is called as a centrifugal force that what is magnitude mr omega square on the both side here see that on the both side a centrifugal force is acting that acts radially outward due to this radial outward the governor ball moves radially outward or inward radially outward means that ball the governor ball the radius of rotation is increases right once the radius of rotation is increases the governor moves moves radially outward what happens the stream moves upward right due to this one the upper arms moves radially outward it carries the lower arm lower arm also moves upward due to the lower arm one end is connected to stream another end is connected to upper arm right the stream moves upward once the stream moves upward see that once stream moves upward due to the linkage of mechanism what happens it will closes the throttle valve now the throttle valve will rotate like this in clockwise direction once the throttle valve rotate clockwise what happens means it closes it will cut off the fuel supply right it cut off the fuel supply once it cut off the fuel supply the quantity of fuel supply is less here once the quantity of fuel supply is less that is sent to the engine the amount of fuel is less means what are the power produced from the engine also less once the power produced from the engine also less once power produced from the engine also less what happen the speed of the engine transmit to the governor shaft axis also less once the speed is less here once speed is less again due to the weight of the governor balls what happens it moves radially inward it moves radially inward due to the weight of the governor balls now the it moves radially inward once it moves radially inward now the sleeve moves upward or downward the sleeve moves downward once the sleeve moves downward due to this 
the mechanism what happens the the throttle valve moves in counter clockwise direction once it moves counter clockwise direction see that the quantity of amount of fuel supplied the passage is more here once the passage is more the amount of supply of the fuel is more again sent to the engine again the power produced by the engine is more again it will uh, act here it closing and opening and throttle valve depend upon the how much power is generated i want to maintain the engine speed constant by here the valve the what is the governor valve moves radially outward and inward to maintain the engine speed constant this is a working principle of the governor yes there is a third point first introduction the governor is a device which is used to maintain the engine speed within the limit whenever the load varies second one construction the diagram and the parts label and they also you should know the parts function for third one working principle how it works okay then fourth one go for uh, limitations advantages disadvantages or applications fifth one is application remember these five points based on the these five points only you should go for explain it yes any doubt regarding this explanation is any doubt regarding this explanation sir one second please explain sir okay or else i will go for directly okay what i will do uh, i think already i have seen this one but i will play one video that is uh, downloaded in youtube okay okay one minute okay i'll show that video you can better you can understand it i think you have already seen this video again for the subject point of view again one more time i will play this one Yeah, now the screen is visible yes sir visible sir the video screen is visible yes sir yes sir now i will play yeah now it can the voice is also audible ma from the video yes sir okay became a fundamental component in many of the machines that drove the industrial revolution most commonly fitted on steam engines power is supplied to the governor via a belt and flywheel connection with the engine's output shaft causing the governor to spin as the engine runs the governor operates the throttle valve supplying steam to the cylinders as it spins with greater speed The centrifugal force acting on the fly balls causes them to move outwards and upwards against gravity, pulling the lever arms with them. As the lever arms flex, 
they pull down on a vertical shaft, lowering it into the throttle valve and reducing the gap through which the steam is fed. If the governor spins fast enough, the shaft cuts off the steam intake completely. The utilization of the governor became crucial in the operation of large engines and machinery during the Industrial Revolution and long since. If an engine is allowed to run too vigorously, it runs the risk of shaking itself apart. Furthermore, in large factories where a multitude of identical machines were configured to run off of a single engine, as the power looms in a textile mill, a constant, steady, and stable speed had to be maintained at all times, or the work produced would be irregular. There are numerous examples of centrifugal governors to be found in the museum, designed to be fitted to steam engines and water turbines. Though differing in size and complexity, each one is an equally crucial component of its machine. Yeah, now the PPT is visible. Yes, sir, visible, sir. The next slide is visible. Yes, sir, visible, sir. Yeah. Now that is uh, what we saw that video. Okay. Now there we, they use a steam turbine. Okay, the working fluid is a steam. How do you control the, suppose for example, I want to generate uh, so much of kilowatt hour from the engine so uh, so constant power i want to supply uh, uh, constant power i want to generate it means i want to supply the constant the quantity of the working fluid i want to supply to the turbine right how do you maintain that then if you want to produce the constant power means the speed of the engine should be also rotated constant speed right by opening and closing of the throttle valve how do you control this opening and closing of the th throttle valve that is connected to the a governor for example if you supply some amount of a engine suppose consider ic engine or steam turbine if you supply some amount of working substance to the turbine now the turbine produces a power due to the once the turbine produces a power and it is the turbine shaft rotates at a certain speed then that that speed that mechanical power is transmitted to where from the engine or from the turbine to from the governor shaft axis. Once you supply the power to the governor shaft axis from the turbine or from the engine, once the governor shaft rotates, what happens? Initially, the radius of rotation of the governor bar is R. The governor bars start to rotate in same directions here, right? That what we see in the, in the video also. At the same time, the governor bars rotate. Due to that, what happens? The one is the force is generated here, the gravitational force m into g that acts vertically downward. At the same time, when the governor shaft rotates, a centrifugal force, a force which acts radially outward. How much centrifugal force here? Mr omega square that acts radially outward. Due to the centrifugal force, what happens? The governor ball moves radially outward. Once it moves radially outward, radially outward. What happens if the radius of rotation is increases? The governor bar moves radially outward means if the radius of rotation increases. At the same time, is the linkages here, four arms here. Upper arm is connected to governor shaft axis and the another one is governor ball. In the middle, you can see the lower arms are connected here. The lower arm is connected to one is upper arm, another one is connected to sleeve. Once the governor ball rotates, uh, radially and due to centrifugal force it moves radially outward once it moves radially outward the sleeve moves upward right once sleeve moves upward due to the linkage here 
what happens when flame moves upward it will cut off the fuel supply it cut off the the fuel supply by closing the throttling valve by closing the throttling valve small passage is here is the cut off the fuel supply by closing not entire completely close some passage should be there the amount of fuel supply is less here once the amount of fuel is supply less means what happens the engine or the turbine produces less power once less power means less the rotation of the engine speed or turbine shaft that is transferred to where governor shaft axis once it transfer the governor shaft axis now what happens when this engine speed rotates a less speed here once engine speed rotate less the governor shaft also rotates less speed what happens due to weight of this governor ball due to weight of this governor ball it moves radially inward now the arms upper arms are the governor ball moves radially inward once it moves radially inward the sleeve moves downward once sleeve moves downward again due to this mechanism what happens the throttle valve will open more here means the throttle valve will open more means more passage you can see that a more amount of fuel supply to the engine or turbine then again it produces more power now our aim is to maintain the engine speed within the limit whenever the load varies now this is the working principle of the governor yes best example you can see the some other examples also you can see that see the merry go merry go round the instrument the toy instrument you can see in the uh, in the babies you can see the toy instrument if you give a key to the toy again if you leave it the merry go round you can see the all the whatever the uh, strips are there they rotate due to the rotation the balls will rotate radially outward right radially outward and if the speed decreases whatever that lever whatever that uh, strips are attached here the pipes it moves radially inward that is a merry go round again you have seen in the exhibition also right some exhibition comes to the similar to merry go round or if you see the in some of uh, uh, the ladies cloth the gagra so if the once the ladies are rotated here what happens the gagra will moves radially outward if the speed decreases it moves radially inward that gagra right yes any doubt regarding this the same principle applied for the governors also if the speed increases whatever there is the moves radially outward and it will increases this um, the radius of the rotation is increases once the radius of rotation increases that attached the steam movement is attached to the throttle valve here yes any doubt regarding this working principle is give me response as give me response no sir you yes, understood the working principle of governor yes sir okay sir the better if you not understood you can see this these are other examples merry go round there's a toy instrument now you can see the gagra okay the ladies which are you wear that okay so see that as the speed increases it moves radially outward as the speed decreases it moves radially inward now next slide is the types of governors okay so we have less than 1 minute time so once the session is ended again you should rejoin the session we'll move on to this one until that if you have any doubt regarding the governor then when you the governor what is the what do you mean by governor then how it works okay then when any theory part is there first you go for introduction give the introduction of how that word comes or definition next you go for construction construction consists of the sketch the diagram and the label the parts and you should know the part function also if you know the part function then you can easily write the working principle how it works then we go for limitation advantages and disadvantages and finally we go for applications where do we use that type of devices this is a five 